my advice mm. in someone uh, preparing to come in for the operation is that uh, really they, they have to keep an open mind. They have to understand that uh, it is a complex procedure, but the quality of care and the expertise within Patworth Hospital is such one that will make you feel confident. I'd read all the stuff about what, what to expect, but it was, um, it was quite a shock really, it was, it, it was quite a shock, but then again, it was what I saw was exactly what had been described, what you would find, but when you actually see it, you know, lots of tubes and being in critical care, it is, it is quite a shock. I did feel, the one thing I did feel as, as soon as I walked into critical care was that, that Emma was being really well looked after. The, the staff were, you know, very, very good, so. Following pulmonary endarterectomy surgery, most patients are in the hospital for less than two weeks. Indeed, the average time in the hospital is coming down, but all patients would stay at least seven to eight days, and that's, that's about the minimum. Some patients do end up staying longer if they need more care or have complications following surgery. It's very normal and very understandable that relatives and, or, or partners or, or friends will, um, will share some of the emotions that um, a patient will be experiencing, um, again, before, during and, and after the surgery. So I think one of the best ways to prepare is, is perhaps to think about um, how, how they can as a family become experts really um, on, on perhaps the surgery and on the patient's condition. And I think they can become experts really by um, using the knowledge and the expertise of the medical team around them. Um, and I, I believe that the more, or what I, what I tend to see is the more, the more facts that people become familiar with, um, the more realistic expectations they have of, of surgery. And um, that serves as a better guide to what, what they can expect after surgery, what they can expect during surgery and how they can manage any, any sort of difficulties that come up. It's definitely worse for the relatives. You're in a bed being looked after and everyone's running around and fussing over you. Um, and it was definitely hard on Michael. Um, you found it really tough to deal with, um, seeing me looking so poorly. And that's the reason why we didn't allow the children to come to the hospital as well. Um, but it was only for a few days. It was a few yeah. days and then I started getting better and I felt well um, and it's been worth it. So some people um, might experience um, um, a range in it, the intensity of their emotions. Um, for example, people will say um, that they're feeling extremely anxious about leaving hospital and perhaps going home and doing things, things for themselves. Um, when they're used to um, a lot of help from the nursing staff. Other people might feel sort of um, slight apprehension but also excitement at the thought of going home as well. With regard to uh, uh, loved ones visiting their, uh, their partner or their husband uh, who's in critical care, they need to remember that it is a complex operation, it's a long operation and that uh, uh, their loved one might not be responsive for two or three days. It may take time uh, for them to actually uh, recover, but that I would say is that you have to expect you have to expect that, but not something to be overly concerned about. I'd say some of the more common emotions that people experience, um, uh, sort of during or after the surgery, are um, feeling um, a sense of um, loss of independence, or sometimes people describe it as a sort of um, feeling slightly powerless. And um, that's completely normal. It's um, usually due to the fact that people have gone through um, a major operation and they're in a recovery period. And um, it, it will take time for them to get back to um, normal functioning. Um, but to actually see it was like, you know, the wife and stuff, that's, that was quite hard to sort of take it. And then uh, sort of to stay strong for her and then sort of and then come back and see her the next day sitting bolt upright was uh, a complete difference. So. Yeah, so that's it. Just maybe just speak to someone about it because sort of that have sort of could sort of talk you through it type thing. Because no one sort of I just sort of went into it blind, sort of straight in and sort of like 
whoa, what's sort of, what's all this all about? So it was, uh, and so the nurse did try to explain um, what all the bits and pieces were of it. That just like you know, just went out there out the window type thing. So. Uh, um. For most patients, they have just simple analgesia, similar to what you can buy in a chemist, and they don't need very strong painkillers by week two after surgery when they're going home. Energy-dense foods that are quite good to have are things like cheese and crackers, um, perhaps more chocolate bars, biscuits, fruit loaves, anything they fancy, but Thing, foods like that are quite dense, every bite will, will be a good amount of nutrition for them, energy, um, to help them heal and get their appetite back to normal. Even following surgery, it is vitally important that patients stay anticoagulated. The operation removes the chronic clot that was stuck in the lung arteries, but the anticoagulation is important reduce the risk of new clot in the future. So all patients with this condition should stay on anticoagulation for life, even after surgery. So the physiotherapist will see you the first day after your operation to help start your rehabilitation to get you stronger and fitter to go home. So the first day after the operation, the expectation is that you'll have a stand up and get out of bed. The physio will also make sure you can take a deep breath and cough because this can be quite painful after the operation. So they'll give you a rolled up towel which you can hold to your chest to support your wound. People's experience of um, post-surgery delirium can vary. So sometimes the dreams or the hallucinations that people experience um, can be quite pleasant and sometimes they can be very unpleasant and it's there, there's a variety of causes um, implicated in, in um, post-surgery delirium. There's a section in the information booklet about possible hallucinations um, which again I read and discarded but that, that actually happened to me and I've never had an experience like that before and it was very frightening and I was suffering quite extreme paranoia. I thought everybody in the hospital was against me and that must have been awful for the staff to deal with, although I gather they're probably quite used to it. But um, that was something else that I would just say, obviously it, it's fine now and I understand all that now, but um, not to get too concerned, you know, if it happens to a patient to for the person looking, you know, the staff, not the staff, the, the carers, the people, the relatives, not to get too um, concerned. Well, it, it took me a while to realise what was going on, to be honest with you, because um, although obviously when Emma had just woken up, she was a little bit disorientated, but she was still making sense. She knew who I was um, and she, you know, she asked about the kids. but. There was there was other stuff going on, which is it's it's very it's really weird because at the time, um, I didn't realise straight away what was happening. It came it came to a head the, the morning after Emma had woken up. I was staying in a local hotel and I got a phone call from from the nurse on critical care by Emma's bed saying that Emma wanted a word with me, and um, I spoke to Emma and she was really really coherent and she just said you need to phone my mother. I said, why is that? She said, because um, it's all in the papers about Papworth and all the drugs. And in, she, she was absolutely convinced that it, the hospital was full of drug dealers. There'd been a big protest the night before. There'd been all the doctors had come in. And it was just a really convincing story, completely ludicrous, but very convincing. It was clear Emma believed it. And I believed it at the time because I went out and bought all the papers to just check to see what had been going on at Papworth. And gradually it dawned on me that this was something that hadn't happened at all. And the first thing that Emma said when I came in was, did you get the papers? And I said, yes. And she said, did you see it? And I said, well, I haven't had a chance to go through them yet. But it was, and I was quite concerned as to how to handle it because I knew that this was, this wasn't real. But Emma absolutely believed it, absolutely believed it. 
Yeah. Most patients after having the surgery will need oxygen in hospital. But every day your physiotherapist and your nurse will assess your oxygen levels both at rest and whilst you're walking and will try and wean your oxygen. Some patients do need to go home on oxygen because they don't get enough oxygen into the system to meet the demands of their muscles and their organs. So they need to have a bit of oxygen to make sure they can function safely and comfortably at home. If you do need oxygen, your physiotherapist or your nurse will organise that for you and the oxygen company will come to your home and set it up for you. And then your GP will monitor your oxygen levels so that you're not on it any longer than you need to be on it. When Emma came off oxygen, um, it was almost on a daily basis, wasn't it? Wasn't it? You could walk a little bit further. Yeah, and breathe it, better. It's one of those things. At the time, it just seems the be all and end all. It takes over your life. And now I look back, and actually, it was about a month. I think a month, six weeks. I it was, was, two, it was two months. Okay, that I was needing oxygen. But as you say, I was gradually just um, using it to walk outside, just taking the mobile oxygen, and then the, the home oxygen. I stopped. Going home is planned when you're well enough to be traveling back in your normal car. And mostly we encourage your family members or friends to take you home in their normal car. And you should be absolutely fine to travel with them. And there are some circumstances that some patients would need uh, uh, other form of transport. Um, that is when you have been started on oxygen before going home uh, from, from Papworth Hospital then we have to arrange a uh, suitable transport for you. That will be arranged by the hospital and for you to be safely going home. And also there are circumstances when you do not have any family or friends uh, to take you home, then Papworth Hospital will make sure that they arrange a proper and suitable transport for you to go home. Journey was tiring um, and I was very sore obviously, but. We put, um, John very thoughtfully brought some cushions with him, so we, cushions under the seatbelt did the job. And I was very, very tired, yeah, but I think I slept some of the journey, but it was okay, yeah, it was fine. In terms of exercise, when you go home, you'll be expected to keep going with the exercises you've been doing in hospital. So your physiotherapist will discuss with you before you go home how much you can do. But what we say, the key is little and often really when you get home. So we advise about two short walks a day. To begin with, it might be just walking from room to room, pottering around the house or around the garden. As I said, the physiotherapist in hospital will go through how far you can walk before you go home. But the key with your walking is that you should be able to walk and talk. So if you can walk with someone at home, just make sure you can hold a conversation. If you can't keep holding that conversation, make sure you stop, catch your breath, and then carry on. And the other important point with your exercise is that you shouldn't be pushing into your breathlessness. So if you're short of breath, stop, catch your breath, and then carry on. The other thing to bear in mind after the operation is that you'll have a wound down your chest which takes about 12 weeks to heal. So during that time, you mustn't lift, pull or push anything over about five pounds or 2.2 kilos in weight. So that's things like lifting up heavy bags, taking washing out of the washing machine, ironing and vacuuming. So you mustn't do those things to make sure you protect your wound. But whilst you're in hospital, your physiotherapist will give you flexibility exercises there that you should do at home to help keep your chest nice and mobile. The best advice that I was given whilst I was in hospital and uh, I was with the physios and I was doing some sort of light exercises, they said when you are at home, when you do feel tired, do not fight it, rest. That was the best advice that I was given and I really feel that did aid my recovery over a period of two or three months. I have a little bit of residual disease, which I was always made clear all along that I would still have a little bit. Um, and I, my medication has been reduced significantly, but I still have 
um, I'm still um, three times a day sildenafil, lowest dose rather than the highest dose from before, um, just to manage that. And I seem to, it doesn't really get in my way, I don't think, other than that, um, as I say, sometimes I get a bit breathless and um, I have been a little bit giddy on occasion and then I know that's my sign to stop. And I, I kind of it, feel that I'm just going to have to live with that, I think. That's probably going to, it may go away, but if it doesn't, I know why. Um, but certainly now I've been walking, I've been going on walks at home because I was always quite a big walker before. And whereas before I could do a few hundred, maybe a hundred yards, um, I've walked, I think my, my, I've walked five to seven miles walks and, and some of that's uphill as well, which is just something I never thought in a million years I'd be able to do. So that's just amazing.